About two weeks ago, I made a video where I defeated Pokemon Black while following one of Maryland's amazing walkthroughs, and honestly, I had a ton of fun making it. So, why not do it again, but this time with Pokemon Diamond? Now if you missed that video, here's a quick breakdown of the rules. I have to follow Maryland's guide as closely as I can. This includes taking the same route through the game, grabbing all the items, and catching all the Pokemon that he does. And don't worry, this will make more sense when we get started. Just like the Pokemon Black video, I'm not gonna do the post game, even though the walkthrough does cover it, but let's be honest, you don't see too many people play through the post game in Pokemon Challenges, Nuzlocks, or whatever it may be. Once again, shout out to Papa C for inspiring this type of video with his Pokemon as Nintendo intended videos. I'll leave a link to his channel in the description if you want to go check him out. But without further ado, let's beat Pokemon Diamond the Maryland way. I realized I never showed off what I called my player character in the Pokemon Black video, so like always, I called myself TQ. And if you don't know the running meme here on the channel, we always name the rival in this game Barry but with an E, because that's hilarious. Maryland chooses Piplup as his starter, which I'm really happy about since I have never used Piplup. Later on, I called it Macaroni, and you know what? I like that name, so I think from here on out, I'll be nicknaming every Pokemon on my team after food. Sorry if this video makes you hungry. Anyways, there's a lot of Pokemon I need to catch before the first gym, starting with Bidoof, who I called Cake. I also hauled in a Shinx, which I named Lemon, and unlike Bidoof, we'll be using Lemon for the entirety of this run. I found it interesting that Maryland goes through Route 204 before defeating Rourke. I usually save this route for afterwards, but again, we've gotta follow the walkthrough. Anyways, while I was up there, I caught a Budu, who I nicknamed Spinach, and a Zubat that I called Wings. The first battle with Barry but with an E was pretty simple. Macaroni easily killed his Starly, and Shinx tackled away against Turchwig until he went down. Over in the Orberg mine, I had a very rough time catching an Onyx. As a matter of fact, it was so annoying that I gave Onyx the name Garbage, because he doesn't deserve to be in the food category like everyone else. Finally, once my team looked like Maryland's, I was ready for Rourke. As you probably expected though, Macaroni mopped to the floor with his team. Kranidos was the only one that could get a hit off, but he came nowhere near putting Macaroni in danger. I had to do a quick team check before battling Mars and her illegal Perugly. Zubat stood no chance against a Lemon, as one spark did the trick. I stayed in for Perugly, and probably used enough sparks to provide power for a whole city, as it took forever for Perugly to die. No team changes in between the first and second gym, so we're on to Gardenia. Cherubi surprisingly lived a pluck, but another one took her down. I flinched Turtwig with a bite from Lemon, so one more brought Gardenia down to her last Pokemon. I decided to go for Leers, so that Macaroni could come in and one-shot her. And Gardenia was stupid enough to use Poison Sting and a Stun Spore, so Lemon hung on for longer than he should have. Eventually, Macaroni came in, and as predicted, one shot Roserade. Right after that, I had to get Macaroni and Lemon up one level before taking on Commander Jupiter. Her Zubat went down without a fight, and Jupiter had the option to kill Macaroni with Scum Tank but she elected to go for Screech instead of another Night Slash. Backtracking to the Valley Windworks, I had to catch a useless Bweasel, which I called a Cheese. Then, it was time to battle Barry, but with an E. I tried my best to use Wings, since I need a Golbat before taking on Maylene. He was able to take down Starly, while Lemon had to deal with Bweasel and Grottle. Last out was Ponyta, so I went over to Cake in order to get up to level 18, which is where he needed to be for the next gym. Turns out, all that training I did with Wings was absolutely pointless, as I need a level 21 Golbat, but Zubat doesn't evolve until level 22. So, in the Lost Tower, I caught a level 20 Golbat, 
yeah I'm not sure how that works, and named it Wings 2. I also had to catch a Staravia on Route 209, which I nicknamed a Steak. The guide highlighted the fact that it was a good idea to stock up on Moo Moo Milk, so I did that as well. After a bunch of training, my team matched Maryland's, so we were ready for Maylene. Macaroni easily took down Meditite and Machoke, leaving Maylene with Lucario, who also wasn't a problem, as one close combat from Stake did the trick. Now that we're done with Maylene, things start to get a bit more interesting. First, I need to breed two Stunkies in order to hatch a level 1 Stunky. Believe it or not, this is my first time ever doing something with the daycare, so I literally had to do some research just to make sure I was doing everything correctly. Anyways, I named the Stunky Soup, because why not? I also need to breed two Burmese, but they take a while to find since they're only found in honey trees. So, in the meantime, I went over to the Eterna Forest and caught a Buneri, who I fittingly called Carrot. After a few cycles of honey trees, I managed to catch a male and female Burmy, resulting in a level 1 Burmy that I nicknamed Lettuce. Now you'll notice that Maryland actually has a level 1 Glammeow before battling Crash Awake instead of a Stunky. This is because I'm playing Pokemon Diamond, and Glammeow is exclusive to Pokemon Pearl. The reason I'm playing Diamond is because later on in the game, I have to find a Kranidos, which is put to use way more than the Glammeow. With all of that out of the way, it was time for Crash Awake. I accidentally started with Macaroni, so I switched over to Lemon in order to one-shot Gyarados. Quagsire died to a Bubble Beam and a Brine, and lastly, Floatzel got taken down in one spark. Barry but with an E picked the absolute worst time for a battle, as I was in the middle of chasing down someone who had a literal bomb. Luckily, the battle didn't last long, as the OG Stake one-shot every single one of his Pokemon. Once again, Maryland has an unaccessible Mon going into the next gym. His level 43 Lucario was added through the GTS, which is something that I can't even use. So, this is the closest I could get to matching his team. As for the gym battle itself, Macaroni spammed Bubble Beam and Brine on all three of Fantina's Pokemon, since they couldn't do that much damage back to me. In Canterlave City, Barry but with an E didn't stand a chance. The combination of Macaroni and Steak was good enough to one-shot all five of his team members. After making my way through Iron Island, I was able to get the Rylu egg, and I decided to call Rylu Pasta. But now it's time for a very long grind from level 1 to level 45. What felt like 50 million massages later, I finally got a Lucario of my own, so my team was ready for Byron. However, I had super effective moves against all of his Pokemon, so this battle was a piece of cake. The following commander battles against Saturn and Mars were very simple. Macaroni knocked out all of Saturn's Pokemon, which got him to level 48, so he's already at the right level for Candice. On the other hand, Pasta didn't have too many issues taking down Mars' team. After all those shenanigans, I went by the Lost Tower in order to pick up a Ghastly, who I named Chili. She will eventually become a Haunter, but probably won't get too much action. Yet again, we had another easy gym battle, this time against Candace. Macaroni one-shot Snover and Medicham, while Steak mopped the floor with Obama Snow and Sneasel. My first go-around with Cyrus was kind of stupid if I'm gonna be honest. Pasta easily one-shot Murkrow, but then there was Golbat. Let me tell you about this guy. Not only did I miss my first Rock Tomb, but I proceeded to hit myself in confusion three times in a row to the point where Pasta nearly died. Finally, he snapped out and took down Golbat. Sneasel was out last, but he died to one Brick Break. The following battle against Saturn was not even a challenge, as all three of his Pokemon got one shot. Before the final galactic battles, I had to make sure my team was good to go. Anyways, Mars's and Jupiter's Bronzors went down with no issues. However, Skuntank and Golbat actually managed to kill Pasta, but Lemon came in and basically avenged everyone. 
The funny thing is, Cyrus was about 10 times easier than that double battle. His only Pokemon that lived to hit was Honchkrow, but he couldn't do much damage back to Macaroni. By the way, I caught Dialga with my very first Dusk Ball, so that was pretty awesome. I've literally never done that before. After a good 30 minutes of mining in the underground, I finally got a Skull Fossil, so I revived it into a Kranidos. I then nicknamed it Serial and started to level it up. After all that grinding, my team was ready for Volkner. I don't really know why I started with Macaroni, but hey, he took down Raichu. Pasta was then able to kill Luxray with a couple of Brick Breaks and also one-shot Ambipom. Last out was Octillery, so Lemon came in to take him down with a Thunderfang. Barry but with an E had one final shot to prove himself. Sadly for him though, most of his Pokemon just got one shot. And for the ones that didn't go down in one hit, well, they went down in two. Before the Elite Four, we had to do one final check of the team. I'm assuming I'm going to be using the four Pokemon at level 60, while Cereal and Chili will be there for Death Fodder. So, without further ado, let's head on in. If I had one word to describe Eren, it would be pathetic. Four of his five Pokemon went down in one hit from Stake. Drapion was the only one that actually lived a turn, but he still died on the next one. I taught Macaroni Grass Knot just to make the battle against Bertha a little easier, and as predicted, most of her Pokemon got taken down in one hit. I also find it interesting that for the Pokemon that did survive a Surf or Grass Knot, they used a Rock type move instead of a super effective Ground type move. I guess the AI do be pretty dumb. Flint was somewhat the first challenging member of the Elite Four. Rapidash used Sunny Day, so it took two Surfs to do the job. Infernape had the chance to kill Stake, but he elected to go for Mach Punch instead. I don't know why he did that. Steelix also went down in two Surfs, while Lopany took a couple of Brick Breaks and a Dragon Pulse to go down. Drifblum was out last, but two Discharges did the trick. Lucian was probably the hardest battle in the game up to this point, mainly because of his Bronzong. He set up with Calm Mind, and then hit really hard with moves like Psychic and Earthquake. Pasta even went down during this battle, before Lemon finished off Bronzong. He then died to Girafferig, so Stake came in and dealt with him and Medicham. It got to the point where Macaroni was my only viable team member, but luckily, a few Metal Claws took down Alakazam. Now it was finally time for Cynthia. Spiritomb got taken out by some Surfs, as I got Cynthia to waste one of her full restores. Macaroni stayed in, and easily killed Gastrodon and Garchomp. I tried to go Lucario on Lucario, but sadly, Pasta got one shot by an Aura Sphere. State got revenge, and then Lemon left Milotic with a sliver of health before dying to an Ice Beam. Macaroni finished her off, and Roserade got one shot by a fly. So with that, we've defeated Pokemon Diamond the Maryland way. Just like in the Pokemon Black video, I really enjoyed using some Pokemon that I've never used before, like Lucario. Let me know what other Pokemon games you would like to see me beat using one of Maryland's walkthroughs. I once again had a lot of fun making this video, so I'm down to do some more. For now though, if you enjoyed, then be sure to drop a like, subscribe, and hit that bell to see more. And until next time, deuces!